Rush Limbaugh, the monumentally influential media icon who transformed talk radio and politics in his decades behind the microphone, helping shape the modern-day Republican Party, died Wednesday morning at the age of 70 after a battle with lung cancer, his family announced. Limbaugh's wife, Catherine, made the announcement on his radio show. Losing a loved one is terribly difficult, even more so when that loved one is larger than life, she said. Rush will forever be the greatest of all time. The radio icon learned he had stage IV lung cancer in January 2020 and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Trump at the State of the Union address days later. First Lady Melania Trump then presented America's highest civilian honor to Limbaugh in an emotional moment on the heels of his devastating cancer diagnosis. Rush Limbaugh, thank you for your decades of tireless devotion to our country, President Trump said during the address. Limbaugh is considered one of the most influential media figures in American history and has played a consequential role in conservative politics since the Rush Limbaugh show began in 1988. Perched behind his golden eye, excellence in broadcasting, microphone, Limbaugh spent over three decades as arguably both the most beloved and polarizing person in American media. The program that began 33 years ago on national syndication with only 56 radio stations grew to be the most listened to radio show in the United States, airing on more than 600 stations, according to the show's website. Up to 27 million people tuned in on a weekly basis and Limbaugh has lovingly referred to his passionate fan base as dittoheads, as they would often say ditto, when agreeing with the iconic radio host. In his final radio broadcast of 2020, Limbaugh thanked his listeners and supporters, revealing at the time that he had outlived his prognosis. I wasn't expected to be alive today, he said. I wasn't expected to make it to October, and then to November, and then to December. And yet, here I am, and today, got some problems, but I'm feeling pretty good today. Limbaugh helped boost Trump's influence prior to the 2016 election simply by taking him seriously as a candidate when other established conservatives didn't want the former reality television star anywhere near the Republican Party. Many of Limbaugh's listeners eventually became Trump supporters, and the radio legend continued to defend Trump throughout his presidency despite occasional disagreements. In the heat of the 2020 presidential election, Limbaugh hosted Trump in October for what was an unprecedented two hour radio rally, during which the president was virtually given control of the coveted golden microphone to answer questions from the host and his listeners. Limbaugh, born in Cape Girardeau, Mo. On January 12, 1951, began his radio career in 1967 as a helper when he was only 16 years old. He eventually graduated to disc jockey and worked at a small station roughly 100 miles south of St. Louis while attending high school. I was totally consumed, Limbaugh told the New York Times in 1990, noting that his idol was a Chicago radio host named Larry Lujak. By 1971, Limbaugh was a morning radio host in Pittsburgh, where he was oddly told to cover a certain amount of farm news because the area was surrounded by many agriculture communities. In 2007 he explained to listeners how the young radio host managed to keep listeners despite the bizarre requirement. The last thing that the audience of my show cares about is farm news. The farm news came on, bam. They pushed a button and go somewhere else. So, we had to figure out, okay, how do we do this and protect the license? So I turned the farm news every day into a funny bit with farm sound effects and the roosters crowing and so forth, and I'd make fun of the stockyard feed prices or whatever it was so that we could say, we're doing barn news, agriculture news. There was all kinds of things like that, Limbaugh told listeners.